So part two of Jello's question, who left in the comments, you know, hey, I'm taking estrogen and I'm being called a feminine gay man. How do I deal with my dysphoria, which is something we covered in yesterday's video. And also how do I work with feeling more feminine? I think this is a great question and a great way to kind of help you embrace yourself. Um, feeling feminine is such a beautiful and wonderful experience if you are, you know, if that's how you identify and, you know, wearing this dress is one way that I like to do that. <laughs> and I like have these cute earrings and I have this haircut like this and I go, nee, nee. <laughs> I've never done that before, but here I am doing that. But do you have like things like that where you can dress up or you can do something special for yourself that makes you feel a lot more feminine and makes you feel like, mm. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's plenty of ways to do this and I would love to hear from you in the comment section what you'd like to do. I'm sure other people in the community would love to read your suggestions as well as mine because y'all have a lot of wisdom too and let's throw that wisdom down into the comment section below. Uh, so what do I do to feel more feminine? Well, I think the first thing that I, I had in my process was actually to wear like very sexy clothes. Wearing um, lingerie really brought that out for me to start with because it um, it's like in a male body and being addressed as a man, um, you do not feel sexy in your body. You do not feel appealing. You do not feel um, attractive. Uh, and when I put on, I, I don't know if that's for you. That's how I felt, right? Like girls, can you, can you tell me <laughs> trans girls? Can you tell me not, not just all girls, you know, but, um, when I put on laundry for the first time in my own space and many times afterwards, even today, honestly, um, there comes this moment where you go, oh my God, like, wow. I actually look like kind of hot or I look hot or I feel hot. And that feeling is just, it's, it, it brings something out in your heart. It brings a joy. It brings a spark. That was probably the first way that I, I kind of started to discover that I was even trans in the first place. So go out there and get some lingerie and treat yourself, girl. I think that's a great way of starting. But uh, you know, there's, there's more to it than just that. And I think there's also really, really little things like being able to do things with your hair, just being able to express something in just the really small way, being able to have a conversation with a girlfriend as a girl and, and a girlfriend, you know, like those things can be super validating. There's this process of your inner work, working with your outer world. So that relationship is important to think of um, because you may not believe fully that you feel like a woman, but you know you're a woman, right? So you can do things to change your external appearance, like putting on makeup, putting on a dress, speaking more femininely that are external, that reflect your internal state. But maybe there's a part of you that also doesn't fully believe, like you feel like, you're faking it or you feel like you're being inauthentic. Girls, do you ever get that feeling? Sometimes I get the feeling where I forget that I'm a girl because I'm alone on my own. And so the lack of social interaction actually helps me forget about my gender because there's no one to validate it. <laughs> and this is what I talk about with this internal and external is interacting with the external world can sometimes feed back into validating your internal world. I talk about this a lot with my sexuality in that my sexual experience with men often validates me, you know, for them to see me as a woman and to be aroused and turned on and to have sex with me as a woman teaches my internal doubt that, Hey, there's no way this would be possible. If I was a man, I must therefore be a woman. <laughs> And yeah, I think I've just covered a lot of like sexy related topics and I don't want to make that the focus, but that's a very powerful space. Girls, guys, everyone, like, am I right? Like the sexual domain is probably the most defining domain of your gender. And also, um, <laughs> it's wrapped up in your gender. Unfortunately it is. I know they say gender and sexuality are separate, 
but there's some kind of intertwinedness and we can't ignore that, right? There, there is, right? Let me know, let me know what you think. So yeah, let's kind of move beyond sexy topics for a second here. <laughs> what else? Um, you know, I think makeup was really big for me, makeup, and I had short hair, so I got a wig and I uh, put that on and my wig was like down to here. I wore a dress and I went out dancing with some girlfriends. And when I saw myself in the mirror for the first time, this was when I was, was considering calling it cross-dressing. And I put that into quotes because what is cross-dressing if you find out you're trans? It's like you're, you weren't cross-dressing, you know? <laughs> um, I went into the bathroom to like fix my fake hair. And when I saw myself in the mirror for the first time, that was it. I, I was like, oh my God, that's, that's her. That There she is. And uh, shit, I can't change the fact that now I've seen her and my life is going to have to change because I realize that she's a woman. She's right there looking back at me. And so mirror work is something that I want to talk about putting on some makeup to validate yourself and then looking at your eyes in the mirror and just saying like, you're a girl, I see a girl, you're a girl, I see a girl, there she is, there she is, there she is. And if you're new to this and you're used to seeing a guy, then it's gonna be hard and you may not feel like you're getting any results. But over time, as I've done this every day, I've started to see myself more and more and I made a poem about a year ago, which you could dig through all the way to the bottom of my videos called He Is There, which is a poem about seeing him. Um, I also did it actually recently in my standup, which you could see as well. It's a few days. I'll drop a link. Anyways, <sighs> over time, he has started to disappear because I've started to recondition my own mind into what I see. Now that's not to say he's completely vanished, but I'd say 90% of the time I see her in the mirror and 10% of the time I see something else that isn't necessarily him. So that's also been super helpful. Changing my voice has like literally been a game changer because it gives you more permission to step into feminine expression. And I know a lot of trans girls who have trouble with their voice. And I actually get a lot of comments about how do I get my voice more feminine? And I've made a video, which I'll post below, but I should definitely make a follow-up video. Girls, if you have questions about voice, please drop me a comment below so I know how to make the next video about voice. I would love to answer your questions. So voice has also been super helpful. I know it may be a little weird to practice it at school, Jello. Um, but you can practice it at home. If you have games, you can practice it online with Discord and just getting to, you're gonna get a lot of like stupid things like, oh, you f sound like a feminine gay man or um, you, know, you, you sound like a kid, but that's okay, that's where you start. It took me six to eight months of consistent practice day and night at the job and in my personal life to get to a place where I felt like I had a voice and once I stepped into just raising my pitch and raising my expression, I found all these parts of me that also wanted to kind of come with that expression. And so that's kind of an important thing that I, I just want to highlight for you is sometimes it's the practice. Sometimes it's the little things. Um, waking up in the morning is another one. Uh, so I would wake up in the morning and just start moving. And because I've been living my life as an identified man, uh, I would also move in ways where I'd be conditioning my body, and I still do this today, not in the morning, but move my body in a way where I am conditioning myself that this is a man's body. And that's something else to be aware of is how much you project onto yourself, your expectations of your body. If you can start changing that, and what I do is I just close my eyes and I empty my thoughts and I erase my projections and say, okay, I am an empty vessel and I am clear. And now let's allow the feminine space to come in. Oh my God, this one's so important, girls. Allowing the feminine space to come in by also just clearing out all of the junk and all of the other like staticky noise, that can be a game changer because 
we're so full of things. Like how can you be filled with femininity if you already have so much stuff already within you? And it's a simple mental exercise to just close your, close your mind, uh, close your eyes, close your thoughts and just let them go and just imagine being empty. And then moving on from there to say, I welcome in my own feminine essence, my own feminine energy. We're gonna go, I think, a little bit more into that tomorrow as we do my first time doing Inner Work Wednesdays, which will be about actually active practice on inner work. And we're gonna do uh, working with your inner voice tomorrow. I think that'll be really powerful. So um, yeah, if this is your first time seeing this video, write me a comment, say hello, I'd love to see you. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and people who have suggestions for Jell-O um, about feeling more feminine, please write them down below. I think other people would appreciate to see them. Uh, thanks for joining me today. This is Tea Time, unedited, unscripted as always, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.